Hi guys, well, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, sharing. I uh, truly appreciate it. Sorry, I have been completely out of making videos, uploading videos. I've uh, been really, really busy, swamped with work. So just making some time and trying to do, get back to schedule with at least two to three videos moving forward a month. Um, today I wanted to do a quick review of all the videos I've done. Um, so behind me is the 2014 X5. At 15. So what I wanted to do is take some time to talk about five features that I do like on this and I'll link my previous videos and to see how you can do detailed coding on it. So the first feature that I want to do is you can have fog lights on with high beams. So essentially regular uh, headlights, high beam and fog lights running or you can have fog lights on with parking lights. I'm counting those in one feature because it's literally simply simple coding wrapped into one. Second feature I want to talk about is your mirrors. Um, a lot of cars, the passenger side mirrors tilt down a um, certain angle when you are in reverse. Um, so I want to talk about that. The nice thing about these X5s is you can also if you have the X5 or X6, uh, X6, some of the 5 series, 7 series also has this, there's a little layer of uh, shade in the mirror inside where you can actually make it darker at night so when cars behind you are shining light, it hits it at a certain angle and it doesn't hurt your eye, just like your inside rear view mirrors. So that's two. Uh, number three, what I want to talk about is the rear view camera. Uh, well, most X5, X6, uh, 5 series, 7 series, they come standard with a rear view camera. Um, but what I want to talk about is how you can actually add a zoom in feature so when you're looking down, it can go out this way pretty much and it looks down and see how much um, distance you're out, green, red, and so forth. It might not help you if you live in suburbs, but if you live in the cities like New York City, Chicago, Atlanta, all the other big cities in New York City parking, a really helpful feature. Uh, you can see how much space you're left with if you're doing street parking and so forth. Um, that's number three. Number four, uh, as a lot of the F series and the G series now people know, BMW were notorious on um, this bandwagon of auto off, right? So you come to the stop at the uh, light or stop sign, you're holding the brake down. There's so many split seconds, right? It turns off the car. And as soon as you take the foot off the gas, it starts back up. So I'll show you how to turn that off. Some of the F series, I know they ended up dealerships ended up taking it off, so it's permanently off. It remembers the memory in two, but a lot of people that did not. Um, I have done this on F series coding on X5, 5 series, uh, 535, 525. Yes, uh, I've done the new G series, uh, 330i as well. I have done it on X6 and it works and the coding stuck around. Uh, lastly, the fifth one I will mention is ambient lighting. Depending on the X5, X6 you have and where you're located, you will have some sort of uh, ambient lighting. The 5 series does not, unfortunately, does not have ambient lighting. It has only two colors, which is modern and classic, which is white and orange. It does not have the option to, but I believe the new 5 series, the new 7 series, the 6 series all have and meal lighting packages that you can uh, pretty much prepackage the car. So those are the five features I want, those are the five features I want to talk about. Before I do that, a couple of things you need for this. You need a V pack, which is very really used for coding. You need a mobile phone, whether you have an Android platform or Apple OS, you will need those depending on which one you have. But this one is Bluetooth. This is not Wi-Fi. This is what's supported with the Beamer Code app. And you need a Beamer code app for your a particular OS. Android, go to Google Play Store and get it. And if you're Apple, go to iOS Play Store, App Store and get it. Um, it runs anywhere between, I think, 25 and 35 bucks now. And then there's also a Beamer Link app that you can help clear the codes as well. But other than these two things, what I'm going to recommend is getting a triple charger. My car's been sitting on a triple charger. Uh, I know right now it says green has been charged, but when I get in the car, I start coding. I'm going to do all this while the car's on triple charge. The reason for that is I don't want the car running. I've done all the car running, 
some sometimes you're looking for code and you don't know exactly, or you're in an expert mode and it takes me longer. You don't want your car to die on the battery while you're coding and you break your uh, eye track. That's very important. So let's get in the car. Um, I'll go through each one of them where they are. If they're in FEM, for example, or VDC, or if they're in head unit, or if they're in rear view control and so forth, rear view modules. So let's get it. Okay, guys. So my V pack is plugged in. Uh, cars on a trickle charger. Beamer code app is running. It's connected. I'm going to skip the first part of the recording where it launches, goes to the VIN number, select the car you have, um, let it connect, read your terminal and so forth. Once it does that, then you want to go into BDC first. BDC takes the longest time. Well, a lot of the coding I'm going to do today is in BDC, so that's why I'm in BDC. So once you have BDC loaded up, um, follow along. I'm going to start the recording from where BDC because I don't want to have you guys see it. It's pretty normal. If you have questions, look down below or I'll put a link up into the channels on the channel link for other videos that I did. So starting the recording now, as soon as you and I'll put it up on the side. As soon as you get into BDC, uh, don't panic. It usually takes about a good 30, 30 to 45 seconds to load up. Once you load up, um, you'll see ambient lighting. Um, huge shout out and thank you to the developer because ambient lighting used to be a lot more compl complex and convoluted uh, where you would have to go into like 3070 and go into ensemble, go into groups and so forth and then go down <clears throat> from there. Now, simply all you can do is if you want easy coding, you can go into BDC um, very first thing you see is ambient lighting color top, then you see the center, then you see the bottom. So basically, if you have ambient lighting package, it's divided up into three uh, rows. Um, if you want to see more videos in detail where I do expert coding and the regular one, I'll put the link um, on the video and you can click on it and go from there. But here uh, you can see uh, the color video um, the, at the top is set to red in my car right now. And then the center is set to yellow, the bottom is set to red. You can change it to whatever you want, but this is the easiest way of doing it if your car sports ambient lighting. Feature number one. Now let's go to the feature number two that I was talking about that I recommend is the auto stop stop function. What happens, I was explaining, is a lot of F series, when they came off the factory line, they were rolled to have as soon as you come, the car comes to a stop for X amount of seconds or milliseconds it turns the car off, then it starts. And a lot of you might have noticed if you bought a new car or used uh, BMW starting, I think they did late 2014, where dealers would, on, on the 2014, they would actually, um, by default, set it to remember the off function so your the car doesn't shut off. I've had it for over four years. The X5, F15, it never shuts off. I, have, I don't want to have it shut off because I don't want to deal with the starting issue and all that stuff. So what you want to do in here, you want to click on the very first setting where it says auto start stop function off by default. Set it to not active. Um, so you want to set it to active. You want to remember the memory. And then the eco will always be uh, set to not active. And so forth. I had done this coding in the expert mode. Sorry, too late at night to do this. And I remember doing this in a longer way. This is a much easier way to do it in here, and it saves you a lot of time. I don't want to deal with the hassle once a car rolled off the warranty or rolled off the certified warranty and so forth. So, so that's feature number two. Let's go on to the feature number three that I recommend. So if you keep scrolling down, the reason I picked BDC. It happened to be a lot more features in here first versus going back to it later. So uh, number three, we will have the fog lights. If you keep scrolling down, you'll see lighting. So you can have fog lights off with high beam. You can have fog lights with parking lights. So you want to set the fog lights to turn on if you have high beam on as well in the dark areas, if you live in the suburbs or secluded wooded areas and so forth. And you can have fog lights on with the parking light. So on your driver's side where your headlight switches are, you can set it to auto, you can set it to off, you can set it to parking, and then parking light with fogs will come on along with that. 
<clears throat> excuse me, that's what that is one for. So that's the third one. Fourth one that I recommend um, is the mirror tilt. Uh, mirror tilt is basically when you the car is running, you engage the reverse gear on your car, your passenger side mirror, which is that way, <clears throat> it tilts down basically. It's not going to tilt down to 190 degrees. It tilts down to, I think, about 70%. Mine says 70%. Um, I think that's the value I had set it to, or that's a factory value that came with. Um, along with this, I'll link it in my a link up here. What you can do is, in your mirrors, like I was mentioning, you can make them darker. So at night when the light hits, they become auto dimming, basically. I think by default, they are both are set to about 40% or so um, or less. But you can actually make them um, much darker at night and you can tell the difference because of the edges around the mirror and so forth and it helps a lot it just acts like your rear view mirror in the side, inside the car okay uh, let's see what else is in here so i think that should be it for here so we talked about the fog lights, we talked about the mirrors, we talked about the auto start stop function, uh, and we talked about the ambient lighting. So now the one more I would recommend to you guys is the rear view zoom on your iDrive screen. So let me come out of here and I'm going to go into, I believe it's, once this loads up, um, this is in your head unit and I believe, yep. So under display opt options for iDrive system, you will see a value or value, not value, attribute, which is rear view camera zoom. So you can click on it, set it to active. And once you set it to active, what happens is when you put the car in reverse or engage the reverse gear, you get your lights um, camera viewing in your iDrive screen. In your iDrive screen, uh, if you have all surround view cameras, you can obviously change it back and forth. But if you go in rear view camera, you can go down in settings and you can click on the tailgate. So if you were doing a tow, that's really nice because you can zoom in and see where the tow hitch is and how close you are to your tow. If not, you can also help uh, when you're actually parking and so forth. So that's what the rear view camera zoom in comes into. Since we're in here, um, I'll give you one, um, or yeah, one, uh, one bonus one. Um, I know this is not an M car. If you wanted to change your splash screen when the car starts, so like your boot up screen from BMW connected drive or whatever, you can in here, what you can do is you can click on start animation. It's still in the same setting. I was talking about the rear view camera and you can change it to M variant. You can do connected drive, holiday, Christmas, Alpina, BW, BMW one, BMW mini variant, Rolls Royce, whatever you're going to do. I have mine set to M variant. That's the only M thing I have set in the car is a splash screen for M. I, I, it really looks nice and it's cool when you start up and see that. So mine is set to that. Um, another thing I can recommend, uh, if you guys don't like all the warning at startups and camera warnings and so forth, in the head unit on the bottom, you can turn those to not active. Please, please, please do not set your seat belts to uh, not chime. Yes, they're annoying. I agree with you 150%. Um, the chime is annoying, but it's for your own safety. Um, it's annoying. That's because you and I will put this on. If you turn it off, you might forget to uh, put it on. And again, I have been multiple. I've been in two car accidents and the seat belts have I've walked away. Uh, thank God. Um, scratch free. So highly highly recommend do not turn the chime off for the seat belt i've said it before i'm saying it again yes it is annoying but again it's for our safety and whoever you might remember right so okay fine you turn it off you might remember what if someone else your friend gets in family member gets in and they forget because they didn't hear the chime and they're used to their car having the chime so please please do not turn it off Hope you guys uh, like a quick video review of all the features that I have done over the years for two or three years. Um, if you have any questions, comments, I'll put them down below. I'll be more than happy to answer. 
Um, I would like to get feedbacks on what you guys would like to see. Um, since I've been super busy, I've not been able to do, but uh, hopefully my next project is to change out the side mirrors to have the M mirrors and the M wing mirrors. Um, I already have the outer caps. Um, I already have the inner caps. I just need to order the order, um, outer caps. Um, that's where it is. But thank you guys. I uh, hope you guys like this video. Leave the comments down below and thank you.